Welcome to Fresh Off the Boat. I'm delighted to be chatting with Ayush Sahai, a student I've known since 2016 uh, when I used to visit Jakarta. Uh, he uh, graduated in 2017 from JIS and then pursued his uh, business degree at UBC Sauda School. I hope I pronounced the name right of the school. But uh, Ayush, the first question to you is uh, about your move from Jakarta to uh, Vancouver, and then also specifically settling in in a large university campus like yeah. UBC. How was it like? Uh, it was it was good. Uh, it's obviously a bit intimidating moving to a new place alone, but uh, it was a good experience. Every there's uh, people from all over the world here, and it's such a big university. My biggest worry was finding uh, finding a good social circle and. I think uh, the thing that really helped me with that was uh, the Jumpstart program that they that UBC does. It's actually really, really good and helped me. Like my closest friends right now, most of them I found in Jumpstart uh, in first year. I'm in third year right now. Uh, so that was a really good program that really helped me build that kind of social circle to, um, to yeah, to get a good like, you know, base that I can so It's kind of a good orientation where you get to meet students in your hall and all of that. What about uh, academically sort of using the resources in a large school? Right. Uh, tell us about the system there. Yeah, so uh, I'm, uh, as you said, Arjun, in Sauter. So uh, each faculty has their own kind of uh, resources. There's obviously uh, resources that are across faculty as well, but uh, I I would speak specifically to Sauter because I know that best. Uh, in first year, I'm uh, academics were fine. They were they were uh, pretty doable for me. Uh, a lot of my studies, I did the IB program in uh, school, and uh, a lot of my studies actually the knowledge carried over. I did a higher level econ and commerce. Uh, in IB, and so some of that carried over, which was obviously very helpful. But there's a lot of academic resources. You can ask uh, upper year students. There's this program uh, where they will kind of teach you uh, stuff. So I was struggling in math. Uh, I've never been very good at it. Uh, so I always need a lot more practice. So I, I, I went there every week, practiced questions, and had asked any questions I had. All of that stuff is there. Uh, but you have to use it. No one's going to force you to do it. You have to be very self-motivated, which is a big thing that's different from school, I would say, because you have your parents and your teachers who know you well, but here you have to be self-motivated, which is... Well said, well said. And so uh, what is the typical day in the life of a Sada student? Uh, what do you really do other than classes, maybe projects, case studies, you know? collaboration so uh so in it really depends uh from i think my day has changed very it's very different now than it was in first year uh in first year uh i was you know trying to uh, get like build my social circle as well as balance courses and all that so great way was to join clubs i was in this uh in actors club where we went out to uh, schools across Vancouver, and I did some presentations, taught a few business uh, concepts, and that was a great way to meet people. Uh, so a typical day would be go to class in the morning, uh, have a, have lunch with friends, uh, and then study for the rest of the day in the evening, and then. Uh, because in first year you live in first year residence everyone it's probably the most social year you meet the most amount of people in first year after that you kind of move out and you have you stay in that circle uh but it usually consists of classes and then just hanging out with friends um Super. and classes are very uh, interactive as well and lots of group work um fantastic yeah. so Typically, what are the areas of study within business that you started focusing on? How much flexibility is there to choose classes? Um, right. And where do you think you'd be sort of headed next in terms of a concentration within the business functions? Right. So uh, 
in first year you pick standard timetable so it's basically uh, all the required commerce courses are uh, all in that timetable and then it's a quite wide range of commerce courses uh, first and second year basically you're building your commerce base so it's everything from hr to marketing accounting finance you learn sort of everything as well as some electives that you can pick yourself uh, so that would be classes from other faculties um, and then after second year you kind of pick your specialization which is you have a choice of 10 different specializations which would be like marketing hr finance accounting and so on um, and they're very flexible like i know people who uh, after third year, we're like, no, I don't like finance that much. I'll switch to marketing and things like that. That's very flexible. You can also switch from faculties. Like I have a really close friend who was in Sauter. After second year, he decided to move to arts uh, and then has now moved to architecture and really is loving it. So it is quite flexible. Uh, you kind of figure out what you like in the first couple of years and then you can that's, that's really good to know because very often students think that uh, it's only the US or the liberal arts schools that offer that flexibility to switch. Uh, but it's fantastic that UBC allows that. Of course, students have to meet requirements and probably right. have to do a lot more study because they're moving colleges, not just you know uh, a course within a college. Uh, tell me a bit about uh, the uh, co-op program at UBC. Yeah. And I know you're currently on your co-op. How does it work and what are the advantages and disadvantages of doing a co-op? Okay, so uh, the co-op program, you can apply after, after second year and after third year. So I applied when I, was, uh, when I had finished second year. And so you have to go through uh, quite a few steps in order to get into the co-op program. Uh, a co-op program is basically, I should explain that first. It's basically, uh, you are able to uh, work full time uh, within your field uh, during your degree. So it becomes a part of your degree. It usually uh, extends your degree by one year and you can work full time while you're enrolled uh, at UBC or any other university. Uh, so, so yeah, so after second year I applied, you basically have to submit your cover letter resume. Then there is a written assessment if, and then there is like a group interview and then you're accepted into the co-op program, after which you can then apply to jobs that you want to do. Uh, and the minimum requirement is, requirement is that you do uh, 12 months of full-time work and then uh, you've basically completed your co-op program. So um, yeah, I'm doing an eight month term right now, uh, which with uh, a, a uh, an organization called Gearing Up. It is a nonprofit organization that basically uh, offers a lot of STEM programs for youth, STEM being science, technology, engineering, and math. Uh, and that's across uh, the province, across British Columbia. It's based out of uh, UBC. Uh, and so I do their recruiting. And uh, I'm right now in marketing, but I don't really. I have always find uh, found recruiting quite interesting, so I thought might as well try. And I've always been into nonprofits, so I thought this was a great opportunity. And it really gives you a good, like I've actually been using some of the concepts I've learned in my courses and applied them to real life. It's a great learning experience. You build a lot of good connections. Um, and for international students, I think it's great because local students can take, uh, like time off of a uh, university in order to pursue work. However, international students, though you can, uh, I think uh, after you graduate, usually you just get automatically a work permit, but if you take a break, you don't get a work permit. So co-op program is a good uh, alternative to taking a break from university in order to do that. Fantastic. And it doesn't really eat up on your uh, like your requirements for visa. Like in the US, uh, you have the OPT, CPT. Okay. Uh, and so here, if you do a co-op in between your graduation, yeah. you can still apply for that uh, work for two to three yeah. years. What is what is the situation in Canada? How do you? Uh, 
So you like, get uh, pay on uh, if you get an employer. Sorry. Yeah, if you get yeah. employed, how do you like? Uh, how do you plan to stay on, and what is the process? Okay, uh, so uh, I'm not a hundred percent because I think there have been some changes, but uh, nothing major. Uh, you basically are automatically uh, given. You apply, but you're guaranteed a work permit uh, if you graduate uh, from a uh, university, and then you can apply for jobs. I think I'm not sure, but in the U.S., it's if you're a STEM major, then you're you get two, two plus years to work. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So here, everyone gets it automatically, and you can, uh, yeah, you can work. Absolutely. Yeah. So, uh, where are where are you headed next? What do you think? You have one more year. No, twenty twenty two is when you graduate because of the co-op. Yeah, because of co-op, I graduate twenty twenty two. So yeah, that's a great question that my parents have also been asking me, uh, and I. I would. I was taking this co-op to kind of figure out what I really want to do, what interests me. Uh, so I think I want to do a couple of uh, work. I, I'll do my next co-op term in a bigger company, see what what it's like. But I'd like to explore more of marketing. Uh, I haven't taken a lot of marketing courses so after graduation maybe i'll go into marketing i really really like the creative aspect of marketing as well i'm quite into photography and all of that so uh i probably maybe want to go into advertising we'll see what happens i still have two years to go uh so yeah fantastic i like your optimism and uh, and it seems that ubc is giving you so many opportunities to build your skills and through the co-op program and this internship, it seems that uh, you're on a path. I'm going to switch gears and ask questions about you. What do you think uh, you've discovered about yourself during this lockdown? What are the two or three things you've done to right. self-improve or <laughs> increase uh, something about uh, make make yourself more uh, productive yeah. in that sense? So uh, the thing is that here there wasn't really, especially in VC, there wasn't really a lockdown. We were still able to go outside. Things, most things were closed. But something I've really done is like I bought a bike, uh, like a bicycle, not a motorbike, a, a bicycle last year, and I've really been using that because UBC is like surrounded by beach and a regional park behind us. So I go uh, in the trails in the park, and it's beautiful. I've been doing that almost every day. So I've become more active, uh, and cooking. Uh, I've been cooking every day. Uh, made some dals today, and it's supposed to be easy, but mine just never turns out good. But I have been uh, cooking a lot more, and it has improved. But uh, what I've learned about myself is that uh, it's uh, well, it's obviously, like the most important thing is I think social connections are really important, uh, and that's just been amplified through this lockdown. Uh, I've reconnected with a lot of people that I had lost touch from uh, when I was in school uh, and because everyone's going through the same experience. So it's a great uh, time to pick those social connections back up. And yeah, everyone has time. So we've uh, been talking a lot. Yeah. Fantastic. It's um, just fun to <laughs> ask this question. I've been doing that uh, over the last 10 days, uh, you know, recording 70 interviews. Uh, sure. Another thing about uh, advice that you would give, if I was to ask you, uh, students looking at studying in Canada, studying at UBC, uh, comparing it, say, with other countries, what do you think uh, you would say when, they, when students are applying? What should they take note of? And what's so special about Canada? Um. What's so, uh, so UBC particularly, I think quality of life is great. Like I've uh, just be having uh, Vancouver by itself is like such an outdoorsy city. And uh, I think that's something really special out of uh, all the places uh, I've lived. Uh, Vancouver has been like, there's just so much freedom to like, go out. Public transportation is great. Uh, you have access, like I live maybe five minutes from the beach and I'm on student residence. Uh, and I live 10 minutes away from a really beautiful regional park, which has great woods, great trails and stuff like that. I think uh, in that way, quality of life is great. You 
it's the weather in the summer is beautiful. Uh, in the winter, it's a bit rainy and not as cold as the rest of Canada, but still pretty cold. But I think taking advantage of what the city has to offer is something that you should really do. Studying is definitely important, very important. Uh, but yeah, I think it's important to find a balance of both, of taking care of yourself and also studying and doing well in school. Uh, because you're coming to a different place, might as well take full advantage, see the sights. Uh, and, uh, and yeah, so coming in, I'd always thought, you know, like you should study, do well, but there's a lot of other experiences that are out there and that will, uh, that will make you learn a lot about yourself that studying won't. So, Wonderful. Yeah. With, with that, uh advice and i think uh, we all our listeners i'm sure would have got a fairly good insight into ayush's life at ubc uh, we will reach out to you ayush in case listeners have uh, questions uh, and looking forward to staying in touch and inviting you to a few virtual panel discussions uh, we'll be hosting this month or next month so thanks again for your time and all the best <laughs>